uh, moving overseas, now staying overseas. Now, there was hype, there was hope, there was controversy, but after all the talk, the negotiations for a historic nuclear deal with Iran have collapsed. Some optimism remains, though, and ABC's Alex Marquardt has more now from Jerusalem. Alex, good morning. Good morning, Dan. That's right. There had been a real sense that a landmark deal could be struck. All of the key players were there in Geneva, including Secretary of State John Kerry. But in the end, they didn't agree on the details and walked away without a deal. Kerry told reporters late last night that the meetings had been very productive, but warned that the window for diplomacy wouldn't be open indefinitely. We know that there were disagreements, particularly from the French, over the scope of what exactly Iran would have to give up. And here in Jerusalem this morning, a big sigh of relief. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called the proposed plan bad and dangerous. A senior Israeli official told me that much caution and skepticism is needed before anything is signed. Negotiators are expected to be back in Geneva in 10 days' time. Dan, Diana. Alex, our thanks to you. And for more on this, let's bring in the host of This Week, ABC's George Stephanopoulos. Great to see you, George. So no deal. But we know that, as we heard from Alex, this has angered Israel. They say that America gave in too many concessions in these negotiations. What are the risks for Obama right now? Well, the risks are doing a weak deal that, that preserves the ability of Iran to break out in a few months' time and actually continue on their nuclear weapons program. I think it's one of the reasons, though, that Secretary Kerry did not sign on, pushed by the French. Uh, in Geneva, they have to make sure that whatever they agree to before any sanctions are lifted, that Iran takes concrete steps that would guarantee they could not just break out and, and violate the deal within a couple of months. In the end, though, it's going to come down to can you trust the Iranians? And that's a tricky, tricky question. Very tricky, although that's why you're going to need, you're going to need serious inspectors on the ground in Iran to verify any kind of agreement. Right. Trust but verify, mm -hmm. as they say in this business. So let me talk about uh, domestic politics. You've got Governor Chris Christie from New Jersey on the broadcast this morning. This is a very much a man in the news. He's on the cover of Time magazine, they call him the elephant in the room, which has created <laughs> some kind yes. yeah, right. of They've created a little bit of kind controversy with this. As he considers a presidential run, just have, after having uh, been reelected in New Jersey, as he considers a presidential run in 2016, potentially, what are the challenges for him? Well, he's got, he's got several challenges, but he also has a lot of momentum coming out of that big win uh, in New Jersey, getting 60 percent in the state of New Jersey, attracting votes from Democrats, from women, from Hispanics, even from African Americans. So he vaulted to the top of the Republican field with that win. On the other hand, he's got to find a way to... Um, Bring the reach out to independents and moderates without alienating the Tea Party. He's got to get through the, uh, those, those Republican primaries. He's also he's going to be able to raise a fair amount of money. The other big challenges for him is does his temper how, how well does his temperament travel outside of New Jersey? We've all seen those YouTube videos of him confronting people at town meetings. How does that play in places like Iowa? We'll find out. A lot of questions. Very excited to see your interview, George. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. And a reminder: do, do not miss George going one on one with Governor Christie live on ABC's This Week coming up later this morning right here on ABC.